How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 23, pinning the parts and painting. The first thing I did though was I made the wheel smaller, and I think it looks a lot better. This engine is not a model steam engine, it's a small full size steam engine. So really, the wheel has to be functional, not decorative. It's the time of the rebuild when all the loose levers need fixing in place. So first of all, I'm fixing the reversing lever in place to the shaft using some Loctite 603. For many years I've used Loctite 601 and Loctite 603 for holding cast iron model railway engine wheels onto mild steel axles and I've always found that to be very successful. This is a piece of stainless steel and I'm holding the gunmetal lever in place with 603. But for a belt and braces approach to make sure it never moves on this shaft I'm going to use a taper pin which will go through the lever and the shaft itself. In this clip I'm marking the position and then it's over to the drilling machine. I line up the centre drill with the centre hole in the shaft and then I drill a hole in the lever through into the shaft with the centre drill followed by a twist drill. This is a 1 8 twist drill and I go all the way through and come out the other side. In the last episode I discussed work hardening of stainless steel so it's very important to keep the drill moving. Never let the drill rub. Be positive and push the drill through the stainless steel because if you don't do that and the stainless steel work hardens then you may have a problem. The next job is to use a taper reamer to ream a tapered hole through the entire assembly and once again we're working with stainless steel which is quite hard so keep the reamer moving. Be careful though this is only a small reamer don't put too much pressure on it. If the reamer was to break off in the hole that would not be good but looking on the bright side at least the broken reamer would actually hold the lever onto the shaft quite well. But it's probably best avoided. One thing that's very important is to frequently try the taper pin in position like this. We're okay for the moment it doesn't go all the way through but if you carry on with the taper reamer then the taper pin may go all the way through the hole and come out the other side. The solution being get a larger taper pin but then it would look very overscale and very clumsy. This taper pin should look okay. The fitted taper pin that we'll need tapping into position needs to be almost exactly in the middle with an equal amount of taper pin showing at the top and bottom of the lever shaft. This job is harder than it looks. Literally, the taper reamer takes some pushing through the stainless steel. It's not like mild steel, but it's worth it and you need to take your time. Do not, under any circumstances, snap off the taper reamer. Guiding a taper reamer through a hole like this to make a tapered hole feels quite good under the fingers and I've got to be careful I don't overdo it. But I got it right in this instance. When I fitted the pin, there was an equal amount protruding at both ends. And flush with success from the taper reaming session, I'm having a quick look at the cylinder cladding. I'm going to have to do something about the size of the holes in the cylinder for the drain cocks. These holes are well oversized and they've been tapped 1 8 BSP. And oddly enough, the 1 8 in 1 8 BSP does not refer to the diameter of the thread. That is 3 8 of an inch. As far as I'm aware, the 1 8 part of this is actually the hole through the fitting. But in this case, I'm using blanking plugs, so there's no hole anyway. What I intend to do is remove these blanking plugs and make some fittings that screw into the hole that I can then thread down the middle quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch to take the standard Stuart Models drain cocks. Whilst talking about drain cocks and related things, I've been measuring the cylinder. On screen at the moment is the original piece of cladding that was wrapped around the cylinder and it's really bad as this, so I'm going to replace it. I measured all the way around the cylinder to make sure there were no deviations from the measurements. And no, that's a good thing. I need a piece of brass sheet that measures 9 and 5 eighths of an inch long and is 3 and 1 eighth of an inch wide. And as I like to get out of the workshop periodically, I went up to Blackgate's Engineering and I saw this. It really caught my eye because it's very small. Possibly the smallest hand pump I've ever seen. It's designed for pumping water from a tender or a water tank into the boiler. But I'm going to make a special tank out of this piece of square section tubing with fancy ends. I'm going to mill a slot in the top of the tube and fit the pump so I'll be able to pump oil from this tank up to the oiling points on the crosshead guide just under the cylinder. 
There are two of these oiling points, one at each side. So instead of waving my oil can about, close to all the moving parts, I can just move the handle on this small pump. That's enough frivolity and excitement for one day. In this clip, I'm cross-drilling the drop arm. In retrospect, I would have been much better cross-drilling the drop arm with the shaft in place, but I didn't, I did it this way. And I'm going to fit a taper pin in the drop arm, but it's not going to stick out at all, because I personally don't think that too many taper pins look good on an engine, especially when they're this close together. I'm temporarily refitting the reversing assembly so that I can drill through the cross shaft, but all I'm doing at the moment is simply making a mark on the cross shaft using my small Minicraft drill with a 1 8 diameter drill bit in it. I'm now removing the reversing assembly so I can take the cross shaft over to the drilling machine to drill a hole all the way through it. Oh yes, and I forgot to mention, with the help of some Loctite 603, I'm going to securely fasten the drop arm to the shaft. Here's the mark left in the cross shaft by the small Minicraft drill, and I'm taking this assembly over to the drilling machine where I drill a hole all the way through it. And then it's back to the bench and more work with the taper reamer. I really have lost count of how many times I've seen instances when the drop arm on reversing gear wobbles about. Well, I'm going to make sure that this drop arm never wobbles about. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm fitting a thicker taper pin for one thing. I'm going to fit it with Loctite 603 so it can never move and holds the expansion link in the position that it's supposed to be holding it in. Here you can see the thicker pin that's going in there. As I don't want this drop arm to be readily removable, it's fairly important to put the other half of the mounting bracket on first, and I'm doing this. No sooner do I bolt it back to the steam chest, I undo it again, because what I want to do now is very carefully grind off this second pin so it sits completely flush with the drop arm at both sides. It's that time again. Painting time. But unfortunately in this episode there's not much painting. I'm painting the back and sides of the two links that pull the expansion link from side to side. But the front part of these, which is currently sat face down on the bench, is not going to be painted. If I didn't paint the inside of these parts, there would be a really bad rust problem if I polish up the outer edges and wipe them frequently with an oily rag, that should prevent rusting. At the end of this sequence, you'll also notice that I'm painting the drop arm green as well. And I think the contrast between the gunmetal, the cast iron, the stainless steel and these green parts should look quite good. But that's it for now though. I'll leave you with some of my music. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.